now let's really get started with the step number one. And I have decided not to do that live, just to make it more easy. And you find many sources uh, where, you, where you can find information how that works in Azure Active Directory. Only a few screenshots. You see Active Directory, have a look for the app registrations, create a new app. And here, give it a name because that name will appear on the login screen so that the user gets an idea uh, where he is going to log in. And the sign on URL, this is one important thing that must be your, your URL from the CRM system uh, you have for just from your, from your dynamic CRM instance. Um, next thing is that this application should communicate or should have access to the CRM system, and that's why would, we need to add the necessary permissions. And um, I think most of the things are clear. The, the interesting thing here is that this CRM system or this entry part of the list will only appear if, the, if you have used the same Microsoft account, at least by default. You may come around this by additional setting, but to simplify, just use the same Microsoft account. And then finally, grant access, save the application and you are done uh, concerning the required permissions. And the last two steps are that you need for the OAuth protocol, you need to have a client ID and you need to have a, a secret. The client ID has been generated already when you have created that application. But in addition, you need to generate the secret, which is called at Microsoft keys. And to create a new key, you have to put in your description. Then you have to tell should that key ever expires and then you hit save and then the key will appear or the secret will appear and then you yeah, copy that thing because it will disappear and n never be shown again. And the last thing is part of the OAuth protocol are the callbacks and callbacks are only allowed to configured reply URLs. And this is the place where you configure callbacks URLs. And here you have to enter your API management hostname, which must be resolvable from your client, from your, from your browser, let's say. And uh, then you have an endpoint, your API, which is receiving the authorization code and consume it. And this is where the API must listen and you have to register that reply URL at this place.